Sunday and a beautiful day to be here to gather together. Glad you're here. Welcome uh, on World Community Sunday. We all, always have, uh, not always, but usually, have a donation of flowers in memory and in honor of Chuck and Benny Ashmore. And I always like, uh, Chuck loved World Community Sunday, the connection, the ecumenical nature of it. And so they always had a dove, one dove for Chuck. Then when, when uh, many passed, the children continued the, the tradition. Now we have two beautiful doves of peace uh, are looking on us and sharing, and it's a wonderful memory to have. So enjoy. Uh, also today, uh, we are praying for peace in the world, uh, praying more than ever for peace in the world, and for those people who are devastated by the natural disasters, the hurricane that has passed, and the hurricane that is coming and uh, praying for God's presence to follow who are in need. So we got a lot today to think about and to pray for as we share communion today. Let us then turn our hearts to worship God.
Father God, whatever we have, and God welcomes us here and always. So let us turn to God in prayer, using the prayer printed before you. Together. Great to God of all the world. We know that you call us to be one world unity. And by God all people into your love and abundance. Help us in this worldwide community Sunday to hear your call to unity and to respond. Help us to be open to the world in all its diversity and to share generously the gifts that you have given that all may know of your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Silence of the next moments, I invite you to lift to God any personal prayers that are in your heart. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son that whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Let us rejoice in this great good news. When it 
was evening. The disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat, they replied. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces. Twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. In our last reading, Matthew 15, verses 32 to 39. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all of them ate and were filled, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Those who had eaten were 4,000 men, besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magdalene. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And so I just have to pause for a moment before we get into the next step to say, baby Hiddle's here. <laughs> We announced you before you got in the room, so Noelle said, and we're glad you were here. So, just that's enough for the day. <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the beauty of beautiful babies and beautiful children and all of your children all over the world. We ask you to open our ears and our eyes and our hearts that we may hear you, that we may understand and that we may go out into the world sharing your good news. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. So the two scripture passages for today from Matthew are very similar. Uh, they're very similar stories, one chapter apart, two occasions when Jesus fed a multitude of people with limited resources. Um, it is not a mistake that there are two stories in there. Uh, other than the resurrection story of Jesus, the feeding of a multitude, is the only miracle story that appears in all four Gospels. I find that fascinating. Uh, what is so important about this miracle of feeding that all four Gospels thought it was worth, uh, worthy enough to record and that Matthew recorded two different occasions when something very similar happened. Two incidents with this same miracle. Uh, from Matthew's perspective, I think he was saying this feeding of many, feeding of the multitude, is so important that Jesus did it more than once, I believe. Uh, maybe even more than the two that are recorded in Matthew. Jesus performed this miracle of breaking bread several times, I believe. And over and over again, bread is in the Bible a, an image for us, living bread for us. And I believe Jesus did this so that the disciples would notice, <laughs> maybe, and maybe get the point. Uh, what is it about breaking loaves and sharing food? that is so important to us. For one reason, this miracle answers basic human need, hunger. Uh, Jesus satisfies hunger. Jesus satisfies basic, elemental, natural, universal, fundamental human need. Jesus provides. That is what this story tells us. We all feel hunger. We all need to eat in order to live. This story reminds us and promises us in and through Jesus Christ, God will always feed us. God will always provide. God will always supply our needs. God will always, beyond those needs, nurture us. God will sustain us. God will carry us forward. God will always, always give us whatever it is that we need and whatever is best for us. And, as in these stories, there will always be more than enough. Even beyond this concrete reality of hunger, bread is symbolic of so much more. Bread represents all that sustains us, everything that holds us together, everything that nourishes us. Bread is a symbol of all that we need to live full and fruitful lives. Bread is universal. It is a universal element that is on every table around the world, everywhere. So when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are saying more than feed us much. We are saying much more. We are saying, nourish my body and my spirit. Help me to grow strong and to, to remain healthy. Collectively, help us to feed one another, to take care of one another, and to receive all that we need to be our best. Help us. Bread is life, and life for everyone. These miracle stories are filled with promises, as Jesus offers bread to everyone, offers life to everyone, offers everything that we need to everyone, offers an unbelievable, unimaginable abundance. Jesus gives. These are the gifts of God to the people of God, all the people of God, however we are in any circumstances. 
So we thank God. Today on Worldwide Communion Sunday, I actually love this holy day, as did Chuck Ashmore, as did do a lot of preachers. I don't know what that says about us. I love that people of all different cultures, all different abilities, all different approaches, all different languages all around the world come together on this day around the world every hour of the day. I believe that this is a foretaste of the kingdom of heaven, that great banquet feast to which we all are invited. I imagine this huge, incredible banquet table like the potluck I missed last week, only even more. Overflowing with the goodness of God's creation, piled high with abundance and all you could ever need. And I imagine all of us, everybody in the world, coming together to understand and to accept, to love one another. That's what God promises for us for eternity. That is God's gift to us. All God's people joining together as one in Jesus Christ. That is God's promise. Today we imagine that heaven, we practice that unity, we pray for that promise of God, and we, and we promise to be a part of making that happen. Today in all corners of the world, all hours of the day, Christians gather to praise God and to share this feast which Christ has prepared for us and for everyone. God says, come to the table, as the song says, come as you are, come to Christ's table of grace. Receive all the gifts of God. Receive and rejoice together in the presence of Jesus, who loves us, who will always love us, who loves the entire world. More than words can imagine, more than words can express, Jesus loves us. Imagine and believe and come to this table. Everyone, everywhere, come. Clearly, in both scripture passages, the motivation is love. Jesus' love for the world. Both passages say Jesus had compassion on them. Jesus saw their need. Jesus sees our need, individually and collectively. And Jesus loves us. And Jesus gives us what we need. In both scripture passages, Jesus breaks the bread. But in both cases, as you read, it is the disciples and the crowd who feed one another. Our lesson today is that indeed God provides, God always provides, but it is up to us to share that abundance. We don't hold on to what we have. We share. We are called to feed the world. It is up to the disciples, to, to we who would follow Jesus. It is up to us to make sure everyone is served. That tells me that when we look at the needs of the world, we must share the compassion of Jesus as Jesus did, love them, provide for them. We, we can't sit back and say God will provide because while that is true, God will provide, it is also true that God wants us to be a part of that provision. God wants to use us to reach others, to spread, to share the bread to share the nourishment, to share the love, to share all that God has given to us, to share in that abundance of God's grace. God wants to use us. It is up to us to feed the world as God has fed us. And as with the bread in these stories, it is beyond uh, that nourishment includes both the concrete physical needs of humanity and the spiritual resources of the grace of God. We are called to share. We are called to care for others, to satisfy hunger, and to share that good news of God's love. Like Jesus, we must see God's people and have compassion. In most scripture passages for today, the disciples were reluctant, uh, worried about finding food. They, they didn't believe they were up to the task. Where can we get enough bread for all these people? Where? Where could we possibly take care of these people? But Jesus says, notice, bring them to me. There's a twofold message in that. Bring the people to Jesus and bring the resources to Jesus. Bring whatever it is we have to offer. Our time, our talent, our prayers, our 
money, our gifts, our abilities, our resources, even our own needs. Bring them to Jesus. Bring what we have and get it freely to Jesus. And, and God will satisfy you. God will multiply what we offer until it is more than enough. That is God's promise. There will be more than enough. Our second call is to bring the people to Jesus. Bring the hungry, the needy, the blessed, the beautiful, the broken. Bring the people to Jesus. Introduce people to Jesus by showing that love that we have already received. Tell people about God's love in Jesus Christ because that is what we need more than anything else, God's love in Jesus Christ. In the bringing, in the coming, in the presence of Jesus, all are satisfied, all needs are met, and there is more than enough. Over and over again, the abundance is more than enough. In both stories, there are baskets full of bread left over. Seven loaves become seven basketfuls after all are fed. Twelve baskets overflowing in the other story. Now, you remember both seven and twelve are important Bible numbers, symbolic biblical numbers, meaning fullness, completeness, wholeness. Remember, God is three, humanity is four, so seven is a big, important number about God and humanity together. Three times, three plus four, seven, three times four is twelve. So those are numbers that mean completeness, wholeness, God and humans together, everything we need. We have everything we need. We have everything we could possibly ever need. When, we, when we're with God, we have everything. There is more than enough God gifts of God's gifts for us and for the world. Today's stories are stories of abundance, overflow. In a world of scarcity, in a world of fear, in a world of insecurity, there's a lot to worry about. But people telling us there isn't enough to go around. There isn't enough. There is enough. In this world of need, in such a world, Jesus offers fullness, satisfaction, hope. God promises everything we will ever need. It's hard to believe as we look around, as we see the world, as we look around even in our own lives, as we see only five loaves and two fish or ever. But all four gospel writers say, believe it, God will provide. God has always provided. God will always provide. Believe it. God will always give us everything we need, bread for today and hope for tomorrow. God will provide. Believe it. That's what this day, this World Communion Sunday, is all about. That there is more than enough for all the world. That's what this table shared, whenever we share communion. That's what the Lord's table is all about. Open for us, open for everyone, all who will come receive the gifts of God. We imagine a world diverse in God's beauty, united through all of Christ's love, empowered by all of God's spirit to, to supply all the needs of the world. That is what God promises. We imagine that promise, and we live into that hope. We help to make God's promise a reality for people in the world. Can, can it possibly be so? Can we possibly feed the entire world by God's grace? It's a marvelous image. Men and women, boys and girls, every race, every creed, color, every corner of the earth, every moment of time, gathered together around the table of Jesus. One perfect, perfect table of grace, filled to overflowing and embraced by the love of God. Believe it, children of God. Come to the table. Gather around. Receive the gifts of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We who have received God's grace are invited to share. Please stand and join in the uh, profession of faith that is printed, we will use the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe?
I have mentioned Worldwide Communion Sunday today. All over the world, everywhere Christians gather, people gather at this table or a table like this. Obviously, things may look different in different places and in different parts of the world. There may be different cups and different bread. But it all represents those gifts that God has given to us. Everywhere around the world, some hour of this day and this weekend, someone lifts a cup and breaks bread. Someone receives those gifts of God everywhere around the world, every minute of this weekend. And we praise God for that. That is, it reminds us to turn toward one another and to care for each other in the world. Today, all over the world, people are welcome. Everyone is welcome at this table of grace. All are able to receive the gifts of God because this is the table of Jesus. Jesus is the host. Jesus is the meal. Jesus is the gift for all of God's people. So let us receive these gifts and let us pray together. Gracious, eternal God, ruler of the universe, loving Lord of our lives, we come to you this morning aware of your presence, your power in our world, aware of your spirit which seeks to unite all people of the world. We come grateful for your gifts in abundance, your gifts to us, and your love for us. And, as, and we ask that you help us to extend that blessing and that love to all people everywhere. We praise you for the wonderful diversity you have created for people of all shapes and sizes and creeds and cultures, for the beauty of each life. We praise you for this world and its people. And we ask you to inspire us to break down barriers and to build bridges of understanding and compassion that all people may dwell together in unity as you have desired, as you have inspired. Help us on this Worldwide Communion Sunday to open ourselves and our hearts to others and to become your community of love and peace, to share the bread that you have given to us, that everyone may be filled and satisfied. We thank you for the gifts to us, your gifts, and especially for your love for us, as shown in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We praise you for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus died for us, that you raised Jesus to rule the world. Now give us your spirit in the breaking of bread so that by your power we may be drawn together and made one with Jesus and with all who are baptized in his name. That we may be one in ministry in every place as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us out to be the body of Christ to the world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray as we now pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread and after giving thanks to God, Jesus broke the bread and said, This is my body broken, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this remembering me. For every time we eat of this bread or drink from this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until Christ comes again in glory. These are indeed the gifts of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
the blood of Christ shed for all, a cup of hope. Let's pray. <coughs> Gracious God, on this Worldwide Communion Sunday with one bread and one cup, you have reminded us of our unity with the people of all the world. Indeed, through your love in Jesus Christ, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Keep us strong in this conviction of unity and remembering your love for everyone, no matter how different we may seem. Remind us again and again that we are your people created in your image. Renew us in your spirit to build bridges of reconciliation and renewal. May our love be your love, reaching out into the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.